And I think I got this from a previous uh, flare-on contest. So um, we're going to use Python 2.7, and I'm going to use the standard, um, I think we're done with this Linux machine. Let me quit out of this. Yes, and exit. All right, and quit that. And now I'm going to connect to my Windows machine. All right. That's normal. Not now. Here's my Windows machine. And I need to start it. And I think I need to start it twice. Because what it does is it goes to sleep. And then it uh, wakes up and it's turned off. So I have to wake it up and then turn it on or something like that. Although I changed some of those settings, so maybe I only have to start it once now. We're going to see. The CPU is up. When the CPU comes down, it might be ready to give me a console. Let's see. Oh, apparently it is. Good. All right. All right. And it only shows the top two-thirds of my screen, but that's all right as long as I remember to put everything up there. So the project we're working on is 402, Hacking Minesweeper. And so I'm going to have to get the instructions inside here so I can copy and paste commands in. So here's uh, Firefox. All right. Or O2. All right. So first I want to do this. In C Windows, I want to make this link. It might already have been done in this machine. Let's take a look. If I open an administrator command prompt, all right, let's see if I can run Python from anywhere. I can't. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, it's running some horrible thing like the Microsoft Store or something. That's not what I want. Okay, I need to do this process. So I need to go to, up to Windows, and then make a link here to point to Python 2.7, which is installed as, I think, part of Ollie or part of Immunity. One of those has installed this on here. So let's put that in there. Good. Make that link. All right. Now if I type Python, I get the expected stuff, a command prompt. The only weird thing is just Python 2.7, because uh, the debugger is actually using the old version of Python that is now deprecated. But that's what we get easily, so that's what we're going to use. It's easier to write Python 2.7, but it's technically out of date. So these machines already have Ollie debug, of course, and Python is working. So now we need to get Minesweeper. And I took the original Minesweeper from Windows XP, and I modified it. So maybe this didn't, I think this was inspired by the uh, uh, flare on challenge, but uh, as usual, I think I sort of simplified it. So now you get a game. So if you go here, you've got Mind Sam, and you unzip that with Extract All and Extract. Okay, and now you've got a Mind Sam folder. Mind Sam game, you can run that. And by the way, let's mention, I was mentioning earlier in the news about the mark of the net. If you go to Properties, this file came from another computer and might be blocked. And by the way, this is exactly what that guy said would not happen. He said if you put an executable in a zip file and unzipped it, it would lose the mark of the web. And that is not what happened here. So perhaps in the process of making it, I, I, that's an interesting question. His workaround did not work because I just did what should have got around it. It has the mark of the web, so you have to unblock it before you can run it. So anyway. That's interesting. Whatever he's doing for a workaround, it doesn't seem to always work. Anyway, um, so now I can run it. Okay. And you get the game Minesweeper. So you can click on things, and it reels there where they are, and you can click on other things. Eventually, you'll hit a bomb and blow it up, or you get all the things free, and then you win. And you can figure out where the mines are by, this means there's two mines nearby, so there can't be one there, and so on. You can play the game that way. And when you win, the winning message will contain flags. But there's three different modes of the game, and each mode is harder and harder. Beginner, intermediate, and expert. 
Each one will be harder to play because the board gets bigger. And there's flags hidden in all three levels. So one possible solution is to win at all three levels, uh, except that's not going to work. I've hidden flags in the wins in the victory screens. All right. So what we're going to do is cheat using Ollie Debug. Oh, I think I remember. I think I learned this from um, Kiwi, Gentle Kiwi's product um, to steal passwords out of Windows machines, which I forget the name of. Kiwi. I named it after cartoon cat, oh, Mimi Catch. Mimi Catch exploits Windows machines and it has a feature to cheat at Minesweeper. That's what gave me the idea. It's just a simple exercise in debugging to cheat at Minesweeper. And that's what led me to here. So if you run Ollie and you run that program inside Ollie Debugger, all right. Oh, don't get that big. There we are. I want to be up here, but I don't want to be that big. So I have to fool Windows into doing what I want instead of stupid things. All right. So now I'm going to go into Mindsham, Mindsham. There we go. All right. So now we're in. All right. We're going to view memory and dump the memory. Okay, view memory. We know somewhere in here it's going to um, it's going to have the board stored, and that would probably be in the data segment here. So I can just dump that. All right, and there it is. And scroll down to show memory near one hundred fifty three forty. All right, this is one hundred. 5340. Let's go down some. All right, there's 5340. So I'm showing this memory. Right now it's all full of zeros. Okay. Now uh, let's run the game until we actually see the window and bring it to the front and click on it to change the display. That's the plan. So let's go back to here. Oops, here. All right. Come on. I can't get back. To, oh, I'm on the wrong machine. All right, so here we are. So now, back to the CPU, maximize, run. And it's running now, so the board should exist. Bring the board to the front. Good. And Oh, I left it in expert mode. I don't really want to. Let's go back to beginner mode. And now click a cell. Okay. Maybe click another cell. Okay. Oops, I blew everything up. I'm going to restart it. All right. That might work. Even that. Let's see if how this looks. I just want to see how the uh, board looks. So if I go to the um, dump, there. This is the board. You can see there's an A where I had a 1, and the bombs have blown off and changed everything. So if I make this so you can see it at the same time as the game, which is here, there. You can see the pattern is sort of set up. If the A is up in the corner, that's a 1. Uh, and then it looks like it may be twice across to hit the start of a board. This triangle thing seems to be the start of each line. And uh, here, these look like the two bombs there. So this is the data. Um, yes. All right. Why did it go to a specific memory location? Oh, I just found it this way. I played the game and then scrolled down until I saw it. That's all. So if you didn't know it, I just play the game until you have something. And then I just scrolled here until I found the board. And like I see, the board is actually incredibly obvious. It's got these triangles around the edges, and then you'll just see the same pattern of things in there. So, for example, I can probably restart it. I think it'll remember that. Let's see, debug, restart. Let's get a different pattern of data on the board. And then run. All right, and now, oops, still in the wrong mode. Let's make it simple, beginner. Okay, now if I click somewhere, oh, good. Now I get a nice pattern without it blowing up. Let's see if that one looks good in the memory window. Um, bring the memory map to the front. Not the memory map, but the dump. There. And yep, there we are. This is where you can see pretty clearly, especially if you compare that. Uh, somehow I'm losing control. Its dump is here. And I wanted the dump to be an intermediate size. And I cannot succeed in doing that for some reason. Uh, there's the dump. Can I grab it and resize it? All 
All right, there's the dump. And here's the board. There. And so you see I've got the 111 and then the 111, that's A, 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 A. So A is 1, B is 2, and C is 3. You can see this pattern. So pretty obviously this area of memory will show you what's there, and you can see where the bombs are. The bombs are going to look different, like the bombs are probably these little A tilde things. So if I highlight that, that seems to be a 42. A B, a 41 is the A, 42 is the B, and 8F appears to be the bomb. All right, that's the point. So you can just read that to see. And, all right, so you can uh, create a Python script to do this, which is what we're going to do. So let me go to my browser inside here. All right. All right, so dump had only all zeros, but after you play the game, the dump will contain the game information in a sort of obvious way. So you need to use proc dump, which I think is already on this machine. It's a Microsoft tool to dump the memory from a process. So you can just dump the memory from the running Minesweeper game, and then you just have to find it with a Python script, and this script will do it. So let me, uh, I'm going to call it cheat. I'm going to put it in downloads proc dump and make a thing called cheat.py. There's this little script I made to do this. All right, so go into, uh, I don't need an administrator command prompt, I need a normal command prompt. There we are. Now, go into downloads. And uh, put proc dump in there. I need to be in the same directory proc dump is in, or so I thought. Let's see, do I have proc dump? I do. So I can agree. All right, I can run proc dump from any directory, which is nice. Um, I'll just do it right here then. So I'll do notepad cheat.py, make a new file. Paste in this stuff. All right. And let's run it and see if it works, um, which is file save, file exit, and Python cheat.py. I probably need to make my window bigger. There we go. So Python cheat. Oh, I have to have Minesweeper running. So let's uh, get out of Ollie and run Minesweeper out here outside the debugger. So run it. And I think I want to go back to the beginner mode to make life easy. And now. What's that? That's right. That's what I did. No, you did. No, beginner is what I wanted. Yeah, yeah, it's beginner. If it was expert, it would be much bigger. Okay, now I run this, cheat, there we are, and there it is. It shows me where the bombs are. And so if I know that I, this is corner is going to blow it up, but nothing down here would blow it up, I can click there safely. And uh, anyway, you can now see what, it, you can now cheat by seeing where the, where the bombs are. So there's a bomb in this corner and in that corner, but not next to it. Oh, I read it wrong. Anyway. The idea is that this would help you. Maybe I've got to scroll up or something. That's the, oh, oh, that's why I didn't scroll up. That's why, what it told me I'd blow up there. Anyway, so that's the point you can now cheat. And so the point of this is you can make, learn how to make that script and then you can modify it. So you have to understand that script and you'll have to change the way, because if you go to the intermediate level, the board is bigger. So you're gonna to have to change some of the constants and make a cheater to win here. And the expert level, you'll find that even cheating will not get you in. So you're going to have to find a flag another way. And quite a few of the techniques you've used to analyze malware could be used. So um, anyway, that's all there is for 402. You hack this Minesweeper a few different ways. And the only, first way is the only one that's required. The other two are both extra credits. You have a lot of time to do them. So let me stop this one. And uh, somehow my mouse is here. There, stop. Record.